Hey everybody, welcome back to the Outer Rim Rookie A Beginner's Journey to joining the 501st and Rebel Legion. My name is Rob Williams. Today's episode is about the spats. A couple episodes ago, we were buying the fabric for the spats, and now this episode, we're taking that fabric and we're going to make the spats. It has been about two weeks of work in putting these spats together, and it's been a very frustrating two weeks. As you probably already know by watching this show a couple, just even once, you'll know that I'm not very good when it comes to sewing. I'm okay with it. I've learned a lot from Terry and my friend Katie when it comes to sewing, but I still got a lot to learn, especially when it comes to designing a pattern. And for the spats, I've kind of had to wing it based on some of the pictures I've had from behind the scenes, shots for promos, as well as just shots from the movie itself. And it's been very tricky because it is very dark in Jabba's Palace, so it's really hard to see the spats of Reese. So with all that being said, let's talk about the CRL for the spats, how they look in the movie, and how it went. Let's go. The CRL is relatively simple when it comes to the spats. It is a deep straw or mustard in color, and the spats extend all the way from the knees with two ribs at the very top. The CRL also states there should be knee pads attached to it, but as you saw in the last video, I'm choosing not to do that for this one. It also doesn't state what the fabric is made of, so I feel a little more freer with this. What's not mentioned in the CRL is how the spats are covering the top of the shoe. It will come right about to the rubber part of the toe and should sit snugly over the top of the foot. When doing research, I noticed that other people's spats have an extra lining of fabric to make that covering of the top of the foot. And I think I'll do the same for mine. I did draw up some blueprints that had the spat as one long piece. But after going through it, I realized that I don't think I have the skill to build just one long piece. So I'm gonna add the extra fabric on top to cover that foot. So when I started this project out, I measured how long my leg was and the circumference of the upper calf as well as down near the ankle. I laid it out, cut it out, and then just double checked that the circumference worked and made adjustments as I went. To get the two ribs at the top, one thing I came up with was to use wire from an old vacuum cleaner that had broken. It was nice and round, but seemed pretty thin, so I thought putting two together, tape them up, and wrap it around my leg, it would get that rib effect. As I played with the wire though, I felt it was just not working. It was hard to use and wasn't keeping its shape. So my friend Dan mentioned backer rod. It was soft, round, spongy, and can be found at any Home Depot. It kept its shape, was the perfect size, easy to use, and made that great rib defect. As I was sewing the vinyl together, I started getting very frustrated. It was becoming harder to use. It was never staying smooth, never staying perpendicular, and started to bunch up in certain areas. It was becoming a real mess. So I went online and also contacted my friend Katie on tips on how to sew with vinyl. A number of solutions came up. One was to tape scotch tape to the foot of the sewing machine to make it run smoother underneath the vinyl. Another was to use tissue paper to also keep that smoothest so it doesn't stick to the foot. And the third was to use double-sided tape to keep everything in place. With these three little tips, it went a lot smoother. I was constantly checking the size of the boot, making sure it wasn't too baggy, but still was baggy enough. Once I was somewhat happy with it, I decided to focus on the top of the foot.
After laying out the fabric and measuring it, I sewed it onto the spat and also rolled in the edges to give it more of a finished look. I would constantly keep checking it and altering it to make sure it had a nice smooth round look. Once I was done, it's time to move on to the second. It was a little easier the second time around since I kind of got the hang of it the first time. Still making adjustments and mistakes, I was able to figure it all out and in the end it looked really, really good. So here it is, two weeks worth of frustrating, frustrating work. There are a number of times I've wanted to just kind of just kick over a chair. <laughs> but here they are. Not bad, eh? I'm actually pretty happy with these. Um, I could be happier. There are a couple things that I wish I had done more, but there you go. I even installed a little strap at the bottom. This strap will help keep the top of the spat down and snug around the shoe. And it's relatively easy to get in as well with the Velcro that goes down all the way back. And I can slide the stirrup underneath my boot. And I don't think it will break up too easily either because the stirrup hides snugly underneath the sole of the boot so it doesn't hit the ground kind of happy about that. The inside's a bit of a mess. I might have to clean up and snip a little bit here and there. I've been kind of holding off right now. I also think I might glue a little bit here. It is very loose and if I glue down the fabric it'll give it a nice more solid feel and not get tangled up in the shoe when I put it on and accidentally rip. Those are little things but it fits really nicely and I'm super happy with it. I really dig the 80s sort of space age style of these, of the top of the uh, cuffs here. I was so happy that Dan told me about this, um, this tubing, this foam tubing, and I got tons left just in case I have to redo these again. But man, it looks so good. It just looks like it. I mean, when you take a look at the shoes in an action figure, you know it's iconic. It has those sort of uh, space age little bubble style feel to it. Now you don't take an action figure for Canon or for the CRL, but it is iconic as I said when it comes to his spoots and bats. Boots and spats. <laughs> so there you go. Two weeks worth of hard frustrating work, but I'm kind of glad it's done. Well, no job is ever done, really, is it? I'm gonna have to build the pants and add these to it and see how it looks. And as you'll notice, it's very yellow super yellow and in fact I might have to stain it up a bit and weather it. There are some uh, reyes in the garrison where it's nice and mustardy yellow and it does look pretty bright in the movie when light hits it and that's the trick to it. It's kind of that situation with Han Solo's vest or suit in Empire Strikes Back. Is it blue? Is it brown? It's all about lighting and there's not, like I said, there's not a heck of a lot of lighting in Jabba's palace but when you do see it, it's pretty yellow. Just a little bit of weathering I think might do it because Tatooine is kind of a dusty place. So I'm thinking of dirtying up a bit and bleaching it up a bit possibly. We'll see how it goes. There you go. Spats. Uh, next, I guess the pants. I'm gonna have to work on these pants here. I've been kind of avoiding it a little bit because of just after all the mistakes I made when making these spats, it kind of made me a little gun shy to make the pants. I can't let that stop me. 
built on hope, right? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. I will try to put up some blueprints of these spats. The original blueprints I had kind of went out the window, but I'll see what I can draw up and you can check it out on my Outer Rim Rookie Facebook page. And just like I did with Nian Nun, they put a little bit of a blueprint or pattern if you want. And you can check out if you're thinking of building your own. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you're doing well on your build, whatever it is you're building, whether you're building Rees or any other costume. Share with me, let me know. Check out my social media on Instagram, Facebook, and don't forget to check out the Generation X Wing podcast every week. Lots of fun with movies, Star Wars, and a whole bunch of other geeky 80s, 90s fun. We'll talk to you later. Remember, armor and grands are built on hope. Bye.